He was lucky. Oh, so lucky. The dice, cold and unforgiving, granting the illusion of power, control, and confidence. They stirred beneath his knuckles. At a chance roll, the world decides chaos. He was addicted, but he was lucky too. He had been dabbling with powers that none should wield, but he did, and it was making him rich, popular, and a target. The air was cold across my skin. It felt unnaturally cold. A shiver, if it could be described as such, was more akin to a full-body convulsion. As I stared up into the sky, I noticed how my vision pierced the abundance of light from the nearby gas lamps. Beyond the clouds, I could see more than a stirring of diamonds beyond imagination, distance, immeasurable. It was so clear, I want to see more. I look down at the people below me. I can see them. I can tell more from a person like I have never before. Their walk, the tonality of the vocal cords, and their soul. Yes, their soul was alight and dancing within the cold dashes of rain that spat across the street and nearby rooftops like rifled fire. <laughs> the only thing I could regard more than their inner light was their pulses. Vibrances, constricted flow, tethered to thousands of vessels beneath their skin. I cannot explain the sensation I have. It is close to the expectation of Christmas Eve. Knowing the rewards are destined but yet unable to indulge. I wish to tear open my items. Another convulsion racks my body. And I clasp my mouth and shut. I let out a shriek. And close my eyes. I sense the street pause. I was between worlds. I curse infiltrated my mind. The world before me was an extension of my being. I could reach out and touch it. It is mine. It would respond to me, to my obedient expectations. I turn from my balcony and retreat to my attic. My space is immaculate, with white plaster forming a concave and oak beams piercing from the walls. My humble shelter is a space for me to create, ooze, and reflect my endeavors for the world. I have been here for six months. Each night, I have this unbearable disdain and anguish to attack the world. I know this is not me. I must discover this. Ah, are there others that feel this way? Am I doomed or destined? I ponder for moments that feel like eternity and then a knock. I approach the door and can already detect a scent of copper. <sighs> charcoal and burnt flesh. I cascade down the stairs. No one knocks at this hour. I swing open the door, the heavy bolt slamming the far wall, causing the individual to look up at me and gasp. Excuse me, sir. I am sorry to disturb you. I am Tobard Green. I come with a message. You have been called. It is with this. The individual starts to wither drastically and collapse. I take him in. He is bleeding profusely. 
I lurch over the man and provide what medical care I can to stabilize his situation. I said to myself, he is weak, vulnerable. His eyes sucking into their sockets and rolled back. His body is broken. I see his overalls are shredded as if he'd been dragged behind a horse or set upon by wild dogs. His hair is thick, dark, and matted. There is soot and ash smothered into his garments, as if he rolled from a bonfire. I look at his hands. They are clasped to shut, white, knuckled, and trembling. There is still fight in him. I can save him. I tend to the man's immediate medical needs, although stable. I see his soul dwindling within the mortal confines. I get a sense of the supernatural about him. Tobard Green, I say to myself, when I look to my bookcase and I retrieve my gifted tomb of the eternal pulse given to me by my great uncle, an acquired trinket from the great crusades across Europe. It has become a family heirloom and an entry level guide to the would-be individual that demands control of godlike powers over elements, inanimate or otherwise. It was the last thing my uncle gifted me before leaving this country for good. The book opens easily and turns to my demands. I need not touch the pages, as the book is aware enough to register the situation. I trust its judgment. I stare at the page presented and notice its simplicity, an easy incarnation. I smiled and returned it to the shelf and then returned to Mr. Tobard. The smell of his person pungent and piercing my nostril, burnt hair and flesh leave me dizzy. I will perform this quickly to limit his filthy smear. I notice his hands still shaking, rocking, clenched tight. Great pain is destroying the young man. I shall begin the ritual. If you enjoyed this audio, let me know in the comments below and stay tuned for the next episode where I would like more of an influence from the viewers. Decide on whether the man lives or dies. Take care now.